Welcome back everyone to the Organic Archery YouTube channel. Today I'm going to mix things up and show you a simple and effective way to make a primitive bow using none of my specialized bow making equipment. So I'll skip the bench vise, no draw knives, spoke shaves, uh, not even a tape measure or a tillering rack. And we will lay out this bow using nothing but the measurements taken from my body and this will transfer to you regardless of how tall or short you are. And I'll lay out the profile with just a string and a pencil and all of the reduction will be done with a stump and a hatchet, a knife, and a saw. So if you don't already have those tools in your garage or, or that you can readily borrow, uh, you have easy access to them at any local hardware store and it's not gonna cost you very much. So historically, there were a few ways to measure the length. Uh, one of the widely used methods was just to make the bow as tall as the archer. So I would just carry on with making this, uh, making a bow that was the full length of this stave. And by making each bow as tall as the archer that shoots it, you're going to get fantastic durability from the added length, uh, good string angle, and good shooting characteristics. But for those of you that have ever hunted with a man-tall longbow, uh, especially in an area with thick timber like we have here. They can get a little bit annoying sometimes, um, just getting caught up on twigs overhead or, or into the brush uh, down low. So I'll show you a method to make this a bit shorter while still maintaining a good margin for safety and for durability. So with all that said, let's get right into it. So here we have a piece of black walnut that's two and a half years seasoned and it's got some knots and things to take into consideration. I'm using chin height which should be universal to every archer and will give good performance and a nice safety margin. Here I'm pulling out a length of hemp cordage that I'll use to lay out the profile of the bow and I'm doing one fully stretched arm span plus a little. I'm attaching the rope to one end of the stave and pulling it across to the other to establish my center line. One finger width to the side of my center line will become the first edge of the front profile. Now just connect the dots. Now I'll take a hatchet and establish the first side of the front profile. As you get closer to your lines, slow down and take your time. This is an area where the natural grain wanted to dip below my line and that's fine. Your lines are more of a suggestion and you have to follow the grain. The first side of the front profile is complete. To finish out the second side of the front profile, I'll use my fingers as a depth gauge and I'm aiming for one and a half inches wide 
and the measurement doesn't have to be precise. If you hit one and five eighths, that's fine, and so is one and three eighths, but shoot for roughly one and a half. Now I'll remove everything on the other side of the profile line. I left a little material on here because it's difficult to cut accurately when this stave is this thick. So for the first thickness reduction, I'm going to shoot for approximately one inch thick throughout the entire length. A good strategy for reduction is to come at your lines at an angle uh, from both sides and that will create a peak in the center that you can remove afterward and you'll get a good shot of that shortly. Now there's a peak in the center and I know I'm down to the lines on both sides. So all that's left to do is flatten it out. There it is, nice and flat and square. It just has some material remaining on that last edge, but it will be a lot easier to get down to my lines now that the thickness has been reduced. To calibrate the high speed measuring string here, I'm just going to cut it to the exact length of the bow. To find the precise center point of the bow, just fold your rope in half. Two fingers on either side of the center point will become the handle section and two fingers past those marks will become the fade area. I like to put a C on the center point. For the approximately four inch wide handle section, I'm shooting for roughly three quarters of an inch thick. And for the working limbs, I'm shooting for half an inch thick. And I will blend those smoothly up into the handle section. For the next stage in thickness reduction, I'm going to take the limbs down to a half an inch or so in uniform thickness and that should give it some initial bend. And I'm just resting my fingers along the back of the bow to make a depth gauge. Now is the point in the build when you need to start taking extra care and extra time not to undercut your lines. Mm -hmm. 
Notice how I've choked all the way up onto the head of the hatchet to get really good control. And I used angles again to get down to my lines and to create a peak in the center. And I'm using the same technique as before to flatten everything out, but much more carefully this time. Here's a good look at the bow blank with roughly half an inch thick uniform limbs and a flattened belly. It's got a little bit of bend now. Fold your measuring rope in half again so that it is now one quarter of the length of the bow and make a mark on each limb. This will be where the limbs taper to the tips. Now I'm tapering the tips by eye and making sure my lines are gradual and smooth. Here's a look at the completed front profile with tapered tips and an area that was tearing out from both sides that's going to require some special attention. I carefully worked the problem area from both sides with my knife and now it looks a lot better. Now I'm going to whittle the sides of the bow to remove some of the deep hatchet marks. Establishing a thickness taper in the limbs is very important in bow making, but it does tend to reveal itself naturally as the tillering process unfolds. However, with a practiced eye and some delicacy, you can pre-carve the thickness taper by sight and by feel and give the tiller a head start. Although you can mess up pretty catastrophically, during this step, so I don't recommend it if you're not confident carving with a hatchet. The time invested at this point is five hours, give or take, and the front profile is complete, and the limb thickness taper has been roughed in, and the bow's belly is nice and flat. And here you can see where the limbs taper gracefully from the handle to the tips with no thick areas and no thin areas. These sharp corners on the back need to be rounded off before the bow is put under any serious bending stress. The first bends are not looking too bad for this bow, but I did notice one slightly stiff area, so I will shave off a paper thin peel in that area with my hatchet. You'll see me checking the taper often with my fingers because the hands can pick up very slight differences in thickness. 
uh, but the bend looks better now. Now I'll go about that far down from the tips and carve some very crude looking string grooves. And these don't have to be pretty at this stage. Uh, it doesn't take very much to hold a bowstring on. Three fingers down from the tips should give you a nice low brace height uh, because you don't want to put this thing under a ton of stress when it's never been bent before. I'm checking the limbs for balance and feeling for any thick spots or thin spots. And I do notice a little thin spot right here, so I'm going to mark that off so I don't forget. And there's a thick area on this limb, so I'll mark that area for wood removal. Now I'm taking another paper thin peel from that thick area. Brace the bow back up, check it for balance, and exercise it 20 times. Not looking too bad. The human hand can pick up one thousandth of an inch difference in thickness, so they're basically your built-in micrometers. The taper feels good and it bends well, but it's still far too heavy. This is going to be the most beginner friendly way to remove material from the entire limbs. And the pencil marks help you track your progress. Uh, it works really well, but it does build up a lot of heat in your tools. And if you're not careful, you can actually overheat your blade and lose your temper. So I prefer to just stick to shaving off those peels. It's always a good sign when nothing has changed in the bend and the weight is much more manageable now. It's time to take the width of the handle in just a hair for comfort but do not remove too much material. Um, if you get the handle moving too much this late in the process, it will be very difficult to recover. The handle is still roughly three quarters of an inch thick, so as long as you don't get carried away when narrowing it, everything will be fine. This bow is complete, aside from a little finish work and a proper bowstring. Uh, the total time invested at this point is about 10 hours, and these are the only tools used so far. I'm going to brush over this entire bow with 120 grit sandpaper and the goal is not a pristine finish but just to take out any remaining tear outs or sharp edges that might jeopardize the long term integrity. Here I'm separating the three ply hemp measuring rope into single strands 
uh, and I don't usually do this to woods like Osage and Hickory and other dense species, but with something like yew or black walnut in this case, uh, where the wood is a little bit softer, there is some risk over time of the bow splitting apart at the string grooves. So I like to add a little bit of reinforcement. I'm starting to feel obligated to include a detailed Flemish twist tutorial with every bow I post, but I'm not going to do that. So the important information today is that for this length of bow, the strand length is an outstretched arm above your head, and I'm going to go seven strands each for 14 total, and I'll go one hand span in and plate the loop as normal. And guys, there are dozens of Flemish twist bowstring tutorials out there, so I'm not going to post one every single time I put up a build. I know I said no specialized equipment, but at this point I consider proper bowstring material to be mandatory. Uh, whether you're just going to build one bow or turn this into a hobby, do yourself a huge favor and pick yourself up a roll of bowstring material. Um, nothing at the hardware store is even going to come close, aside from maybe Dyneema fishing line, but 550 paracord is garbage, uh, tarred bank line is garbage, and when you figure the cost per string from, say, a roll of D97, it's almost nothing, and it's going to save you so many headaches. A full fist meal for me is like six and three quarter inches, which is way too high for this bow. So here's my modified fist meal, which puts the brace height at about five and a quarter or so. And to set the location for the center serving, I just place an arrow shaft perpendicular to the string and give the serving a little room for my fingers up top and a little extra on bottom to protect the string from my arm guard. My serving of choice is 80 pound braided fishing line, hand spun with a piece of wood that has a groove in it. I'm using teak oil to protect this bow from the elements, but many of the oils sold at the hardware store work fine. My favorites are teak, tongue, and Danish oils. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the build. Uh, you can see the bow took very little string follow, which I thought was really cool because it's just a piece of raw black walnut with no heat treatment or anything. So it's just a good visual indicator that uh, the bow's not too short and that I didn't try to push the draw weight too high for this particular piece of wood. Um, I would say it draws somewhere around 52 to 53 pounds and I'm really tempted to throw it up on the scale, but I'm not going to I'm gonna stick with the no specialized equipment theme, but If I could do it again, I think I would have chosen something other than black walnut 
I've had this stave on the wall for two and a half years and I've been waiting for a special occasion for it. And I've only built one or two black walnut bows the entire time I've been doing this and it was years ago. Um, and I had completely forgotten how wild the grain can be. So you're gonna notice in the close-up shots, there are all these seemingly out of place areas where the grain sort of dips in, in the front profile. Uh, just know that those are intentional. This stave was tearing out bad from both directions. So whenever it did that, I had to just go into each one of those spots and very carefully carve it from both directions with my pocket knife, which added quite a lot of time to the build, but you have to do that. If I was to force like a straight edge, perfect limb profile on a piece of wood like this that has natural waves in the grain, um, each one of those areas where it wants to dip in that, that get cut across with a straight line will create grain runouts, um, which are potential areas for breakage in the future. So you have to let the stave tell you what kind of bow is inside of it and uh, not just force your design on every piece of wood you come across. So one other thing is some of you know I like to go super OCD with my finish work and I'll spend hours on a bow just sanding out every single tool mark and stepping down to finer and finer grit sandpaper until there's almost a mirror shine with no sanding scratches or anything uh, in the finished product. But as this build progressed, uh, the hatchet chop marks in the side and some of the tear outs in the belly and the deeper scratches started to grow on me. So I decided to just give it a quick dusting with 120, uh, take down any areas that were kind of jagged that might affect the longevity of the bow, but otherwise keep all the chop marks and everything for character. And uh, as a reminder that this was a hatchet bow and not just another one that uses all the specialized equipment. So it just goes to show, it can be done with very little. You guys will see videos out there of people telling you, you have to build a tilling rack, you have to buy a draw knife, and it's just not true. Uh, those things, they definitely help. Uh, a tilling rack can be especially helpful, but our ancient ancestors didn't have them and they figured it out. So once you get a good feel for how the limb taper and how a braced bow is supposed to look when it's well balanced. You can do pretty much 90 to 100% of your tillering just by looking at the braced profile and by very carefully monitoring the thickness taper. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm gonna close it out with some tight shots and I'll see you next time.